This is day two of the wolf prep. Um, this is the wolf that we got, it was hit by a car. The reason we moved him underneath the fume hood today is because he's got a little bit of gas in here. I got this scalpel and we're gonna try and release the gases today and hope that I don't vomit. Okay, oh my God. Oh, I've never done anything like this before. <sighs> here we go. Okay, it's in the body. Yeah, you can hear the gases being released. I can't smell anything yet. So he's starting to deflate a little bit. I don't know, did that do it? Was that it? That was a little anticlimactic. I can't smell anything, I can't. I could. I think we're good. Woo! You're gonna have to grab the tray. I, just, I gotta grab his head too. I can't. You can let the head hang. You only had three arms. Okay. Here we go. Oh, he oh, still God. smells. <coughs> oh, there we go. Oh my God. I don't, I don't want to do this, you guys. I think it's worse when you like lift him up. I think it's like in his groin area is where this is bad. Maybe I should have made another cut down there. Cause you can see on here, all of his guts are just like, gravity is pulling him down there. Oh man, ugh. Oh. That's ripe. That is rich. Well, <laughs> oh, where should we start? I mean, if you throw up at this point, you'll probably throw up in your face mask, but let's keep our barf bags handy. We don't have enough space to store his entire body in a freezer as a whole unit. So we're gonna remove his head. We're gonna cut off the limbs, scapula, humerus down, remove the legs, which I think might be the worst bit of it. So let's start with the head and work towards the gross. Okay, so you have C1 and C2. They're called the atlas and the axis. You think about it this way, is the um, atlas you know, supports the world, AKA the head on his shoulders, and the axis is what the world turns on. So it's an easy way to remember those two. Atlas, axis, and then you have about five other ones that connect to the uh, thoracic and then the lumbar vertebrae. So I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate where that last that last cervical is and cut into the muscle while we cut his head off. You can see these different muscle layers in here too. There's a layer of muscle, a little bit of fat, more muscle down here. It has this metallic-y shine between the, the layers. If you could hold his head up, that'd be nice. Woo, there we go, his throat. We just cut through the throat. This is uh, all cartilage and you can see bile. There's a little bit of bile matter in there. It's on my finger and there's blood in here too, probably coming up from his bowels or his stomach from the, uh, you know, from when he sustained an injury, but it just looks like a pipe, it's like a whistle. Not that I wanna put my mouth on it and blow across it. Now I'm just hitting the bone. And I would ideally like to cut between two of the vertebrae, but it might be kind of hard to find where they start and end. I can feel the, um, shoot, what is that called? The dorsal spine of one of them, that's the top of the vertebrae. Can you move his head maybe up and down? The other way, like side to side, I guess it would be. Oh, there we go. Okay, so when James did that, I could see where um, two of the vertebrae were occluding together, so I can cut around the cartilage. It's frozen. Yeah, you heard it. You can hear it. It's like cutting through ice. Oh, we're getting close. Whoop, whoop, there we go. So, if you look at it from this way, here is the spinal cord. Here's the top of that cervical vertebrae. So this is all muscle. Look at all of the incredible amount of muscle that is on top of the vertebrae. And they extend up it until about right here. The rest of this is all just muscle attachment. Here's the throat. It's very springy. It's very flexible. And uh, it's very durable. It's like it's got rings in it. And it does, it has these rings in it that have more connective tissue between them. So it can move kind of like an accordion, like a spring an accordion spring or something. And it can open like that. What's well, cute, it's like a bracelet or something. How much do you think that weighs? Just estimate. Um, this is probably 12 to 15 pounds. 12 to 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. With the muscle and everything. Oh yeah, this is heavy. Woo! This is, yeah, I mean this is a, how heavy is this? This is about a six month old. 
right here, don't you think? No kids. Every time we move him, ugh, or shift him, it seems to like disrupt whatever is making this smell so bad and it's being released out of that incision we made. I have a feeling uh, it's just gonna be all fun and games for the rest of the day. You okay over there? You are doing good? Woo, let's do this. This is bone marrow. I guess, I mean, at this point when it's kind of cold, it's like a good like putty, like, like consistency. That's pretty neat. It's like Play-Doh. We removed the forward right limb, including the scapula and the top half of the humerus. This was busted in half. You can see where it was broken there. This is kind of cool. You can see the mechanics of how these bones move together. You have the humerus and the scapula. The cartilage makes it very easy for them to move and flex together. We're gonna throw this in the bug box to give them a little bit of something to eat. Oh, before I do that, I should show you this too. You know, we knew that the humerus was fractured. We did not know that the scapula had also sustained damage. So you can see where it's broken right there and splintered. I'm able to flex this a little bit. And a lot of you guys uh, ask about the bugs and everything. And I just wanted to clarify, we don't put the entire body into the beetles. There's no way that the, these tiny little beetles could feasibly eat all of the muscle tissue before it rots. So this is about how clean something has to be before it goes into the beetles. You wanna move the majority of all the muscles. The stuff that is harder to remove around the edges, that's what the beetles will go for. This is the part I am the very most nervous about because it seems to be that the horrible odor keeps emanating from this region. Although this is the bright green nasty part, every time we move the, the nether regions, we seem to get a, a revival of the delicious rotten egg, dead bacteria smell that keeps coming off of this guy. So we're gonna remove this, this back limb right now and hope that I don't throw up. I mean, I'm gonna do my best to not cut into it unnecessarily, but I'm nervous. I'm gonna be cutting down here. I am, oh God. We talked about maybe having a safety word in case we needed to run. But I think the safety word will just be some of us screaming and going, oh my God, get out of here. So we have blood. That's okay. Wow. Look at that. This is just part of the muscle. This is all of the muscle that I have cut off of the, uh, the femur so far. This is one leg. This is not even all of the muscle. This is like three quarters of the muscle. The uh, patella right here, this is your kneecap. Um, it's pretty small. It's just this bone right here. There's a lot of cartilage that surrounds it. And this is extremely um, slick, it's very lubricated. The cartilage is that great material between your joints that helps everything move um, fluidly. So the patella sits right in there and this is the distal end of the uh, femur. So you can see how it moves in that groove. It's called the patellar groove. This femur is like in the socket right there too and this is where the, um, it attaches to the, is it in the pubis or the ilium? Uh, the ilium. The so ilium. fun sound. That's a really fun sound. You hear that? That's the head of the femur <laughs> coming in and out of the socket joint. Ooh, we got a leg. Cool. Look at that. This is the head of the femur. It is very round shaped. Compared to the femur below, like we can even line them up. Look at how much of that is just muscle surrounding the bone. That's awesome. Whoops. Hey, that's coming off pretty easily. I cleaned off some of the muscle that was along um, this part of the tibia and the fibula so that you could see the fibula. The lower part of the leg has two separate bones, which are the tibia and the fibula. And in ungulates like deer, uh, the fibula is either greatly reduced or it's entirely fused. Sometimes, in, like in a whole horse, it is both fused and reduced. But with um, like the, a canid and other, I think it's other predators, they have them separate. Advantage of that is muscle attachment for um, endurance. Cool! He's bleeding all over the place up here. Whoa, 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 whoa! Do you see that? That is a lot of blood. Something we did shifted he's all laying, that internal. He's laying on that incision. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh dear lord. We lifted him up and it's coming all out of that incision. Oof. Oof. Uh, I feel like if I just keep talking, I'm not breathing, so it's okay. But every time I stop and take a breath, it's still there. Still there. Still smelling it. Ooh, that is fresh. It is like everything that we were avoiding all day, all of a sudden now it's just coming out. And I just want to get this leg off so maybe I can run outside and get some fresh air. It smells like 
It smells like the Easter egg that you hid somewhere behind a bookshelf in your house when you were a kid and then Easter was over and people forgot that you didn't pick up one of the eggs. But instead of just one egg, it was like two dozen eggs. I'm moving the muscle really quickly just for simplicity's sake. He's bleeding all over the place here. Oh God. Oh my God. Whew. Oh. Power through. Oh. oh. Here we go, here we go. There we go, got the leg off. Oh man. Whew. Should we remove the bowels today? Should we just do it? I think we should probably just do it because it'll be easier to store the rest of them anyway. Yeah, maybe. I think we should do it. This is going to be a great episode, you guys. I might just throw up. That'll be, that'll be the fun part. You thought releasing the gas was going to be exciting? Wait until we cut this thing open and take out its intestines because you're going to see that today on the Brain Scoop. Do you want to maybe do this part? Because I mean, I, I trust you to do this. Because I don't know where the, where the tissues begin. I normally just open them up and it'll come out. But. So James is trying to find the delicate balance between the sac that holds all of the organs in and not puncturing that so we can remove them all as one unit so we don't have gut filling out all over the place. Some lady just walked down the hallway and opened up a window and cast a very disgusted look into our lab. Oh, oh, that smells really awful. Oh boy. If we just sing a little song. What do you call that sack? It's the abdominal cavity. It's oh, okay, just the abdominal basically cavity. Basically, there's two chambers in your, in your torso. There's the abdominal cavity, which is all your digestive organs. And your diaphragm sits above that. Ooh. And then your pleural cavity with your lungs sits keep above cutting. that. Keep cutting. <laughs> so we're trying to do this as cleanly as possible and try to keep all the digestive organs, which we think are the source of the bad smell, which makes sense, together in this, in this sack. If we do this, I mean, it's already a mess, but if we do this right, we won't have to take out e each individual digestive organ by itself. Oh, that is bad. Uh, I have a pretty strong stomach, you guys, but this is one of the grosser things I've ever had to deal with. There's usually not as much mess. You know, I mean, it's just we haven't ever worked on anything this large that, that has been this traumatized. Oh, whoops. You cut through it. You can see the organs in there now. We were going to save the stomach and uh, see what it had been eating, but now I don't know if I care that much. We were gonna try to be graceful about this and just take it all out as one sack there's unit. There's already too much damage. But there's too much damage. So, you know what, why don't we cut all of this off too? That's the fleshy stuff that keeps your organs together. This would be... So they don't move around your body. This would be the stomach cavity, I'm guessing. Ooh, should we open it? Yeah. It looks kind of bloated. I'm scared, this is gonna be scary. Whoa. It just like blew up a little bit. You're not sharp enough? There's definitely gas coming out of that thing. Oh, source of the smell. Whoa, oh cool, there's fur in there. That's awesome, this is so neat. Whoa, wow, oh that smells bad. This is so awesome. Wow, look you guys. It was digesting stuff. We gotta keep this. I get a little tray. This is awesome. This is so cool. It's, there's still all the fur in there. We can see what it was eating. There's oh, there's poo. poo. Stay away from the poo. That's the stuff that has the, uh, all the bacteria. This is sick, you guys. I need to shower. So this looks like liver. So the liver right here. Intestines, kind of tubes. Large and small intestine. Looks like the kidney. Kidney. And this is, you can see how big the liver is. I mean, there's a lot. That's a, that's a heavy, heavy organ. That's really big, yeah. It's significant. Okay, let's get rid of it. I don't want it. Oh, God. Well, that was fun. Now we have the body prepared. All the organs have been removed. Hopefully we won't ever have to experience that horrific stench ever again. That was certainly a learning experience for everyone. It still has brains on it.